Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the fourth in our IoT Security Raspberry Pi emulation videos. In this fourth foundational video, we'll be customising the Kali Linux installation. In the previous video, we imported the Kali Linux OVA file into Oracle VirtualBox. This gave us a fully usable Kali Linux guest VM. However, it wasn't running quite the way we'd like it to. If I open up Oracle VirtualBox and start the Kali Linux guest VM, it only takes a couple of seconds to start. I can show you what the problem is. Once the system starts to load up, the desktop the graphical user interface, the actual desktop, sits at a fixed size regardless of how big we make the window. If we expand the window size by dragging it, the desktop doesn't actually follow that. Now this isn't really a game changer, you can still use Kali Linux like that. However, it would be nice if we could have the desktop automatically expand to fill the size of the window when we change the window size. So I'm going to log in with the default username of root, R -O, o T, and the default password of Tor, T -O, o R. I'll wait a few seconds for the graphical user interface to load up, and I can show you precisely what the problem is. And like I say, you can use Kali like this. But when you've got a big monitor, it seems a shame to have such a small desktop. We can go in and change the resolution, but there are only certain fixed resolutions. What would be really nice is if we could just drag the window and the guest desktop automatically expands to the size of the window. You should be able to do that by going to View, Auto Resize Guest Display. However, that's greyed out. And the reason it's greyed out is because the Oracle VirtualBox Guest Editions isn't installed. So that's what we're going to do now. In order to do that, we go to Devices, Insert Guest Edition CD Image. Now there is a little batch file in there which will automatically try to run it. However, this is not the best way of doing it. What we're going to do is we're going to hit cancel. We're going to right click on the CD ROM icon and go to open, which will open it in the file manager. And then what we can do is we can right click anywhere in the background in file manager and we can go to open in terminal. And here we can see that we're actually in forward slash media CD ROM. So we're actually in a terminal window inside the CD-ROM drive. Um, I can do a PWD, print working directory, to show that I'm in media CD-ROM 0. I can do an ls space minus l, list files, long listing, and you can see the contents of the files in that directory. So these are the exact same files that we've got shown graphically. file we're interested in is the executable file. All the green files are executable. You can see the executable bits have been set, the X's, uh, which shows up as green in uh, this uh, terminal window. The one we're interested in is VBox Linux Editions run. Now I could try running it from here, but that doesn't always work on a Linux system because the CD-ROM drive is, is effectively it's a, a read-only drive. So it's safer to copy it across to somewhere on the hard drive and run it from there. In order to do that, we'll just find a nice location on the hard drive. So I'm going to type cd forward slash opt, switch to the opt directory, and then I will type cp minus a, and I'll copy the path that we looked at earlier when I typed pwd. So that's forward slash media forward slash CD-ROM 0 
forward slash vbox Linux editions dot run then a space and then the full stop so that's cp space hyphen a forward slash media cd-rom zero vbox Linux editions dot run space and then a full stop and the full stop basically means copy it to here okay so now in the op directory what I should see is vbox Linux editions dot run don't worry about that directory there called teeth that's actually something to do with uh, Kali Linux always makes me laugh that one now it's simply a case of running that file so we can do that with dot forward slash vbox Linux editions dot run I'm just using the tab key to automatically complete the commands okay you can see that this uncompressed the guest editions now the problem is if you try to do this from the CD-ROM because the CD-ROM is read-only it tries to uncompress it to the CD-ROM which is a read-only system so that's where you have the problem so this is why we need to copy it across to a location on the hard drive and forward slash opt is a sensible place to put this do we wish to continue yes and then it will work its way through copying in additional modules installing uh, additional modules building modules for the kernels take a little while to do this what this should do is this should allow us to have the VBOX guest editions running on a virtual machine guest on this Kali Linux machine. We'll have to do a restart at the end of this but it should allow us to resize the window and the guest desktop should follow the size of the window. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause that for just a moment okay I had to pause that for about 50 seconds or so and now it's finished we can see VBOX guest editions running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted so we now need to restart the system now what I always like to do myself personally is I like to um, type sync before I do a restart just gonna pause the system one more time okay that's the hazards of running multiple uh, monitors I was actually clicking in uh, a different monitor there wondering why it wasn't working um, so I'm now going to do a sync exit I'll close the file manager window I'll eject the CD-ROM drive and then we'll do a restart I can't believe it it'll make you laugh probably this I got uh, one monitor which is basically working as a, uh, a recording uh, monitor and the other one which is actually the live monitor with a virtual machine in and uh, I was clicking on the image in the recording monitor and wondering why I couldn't select it <laughs> doesn't matter how many times you do these things something always happens and you think that's strange okay so uh, here we go we've got Kali Linux rebooting now we'll type in root tor and already you can see that we've got a bigger window not only have we got a bigger window but what we should have is once the system fully loads we should be able to resize the window and we should be able to have the let's put auto resize on yeah let's have a little look
There we go. It just takes a little while to catch up the first time you do this. Uh, so bear that one in mind. The very first time you put the guest editions on and you do a reboot, um, it does take a little while for it to sort of catch up and for all the modules to load in. So you may have noticed I was resizing the window and uh, it didn't appear to be doing anything. There was a bit of a lag there. But now as I resize the window, you can actually see that the desktop is uh, basically following the size of the window. I can maximize the window, give it a few seconds and the desktop follows it. OK, so that's good. Um, what we'll also do now is we'll just do a couple of other quick little things just to make it a little bit more usable. Uh, we'll go into settings. We'll go to region and language. You can see currently we have uh, the language set to uh, United States English. So we'll switch that over to United Kingdom English. Obviously this depends on where you're actually based. We'll actually need to do a restart for this to take effect. The format will automatically change to United Kingdom English. The input sources, we'll add an input source. So this will sort our keyboard out. We'll say English United Kingdom. English UK, add, and we'll move the English UK one to the top, so it's the primary one. We could delete the English uh, US one, or probably just leave it on there for the moment. We'll restart the session. Now this is not actually restart of Kali Linux, it's just basically restarting the session, so it's logging us out and asking us to log back in again. So now we have a more usable machine, I would say. We have a system where the um, the background is of a reasonable size. We can also select which keyboard we wish to have, which locale we wish to use. And we can do that from up the top here. Um, just open up the terminal window. I'm going to hit uh, Shift and 2. and we get the double quotes instead of the at symbol, which is rather nice. Um, we look at our locales, we've got English UK. I can actually show the keyboard layout as well, which is quite nice. And you can see that we've got, above the two, we've got the double quotes. I can even press Shift and 2. You can see double quotes going on and off. OK, so that's fixed our keyboard. Um, let's just type date to check the date and time. Okay, you may notice that my host system is set for three minutes past six, which is the exact time it is now when I'm recording this video, whilst on the Kali system we've got three minutes past one in the afternoon. This is because it's set to Eastern time. So this is set to American time at the moment. We can fix that as well. It's um, perfectly possible to fix that. The way we would do that is DPKG TZ data. DP, well, DPKG reconfigure TZ data. So it's DP DPKG 
reconfigure so Debian package reconfigure TZ data it's simply a case of going down to Europe to London fixed okay so now a virtual machine guest time zone is set to the correct time zone and will match a local system okay um, that's 15 minutes on that video which is more than long enough so join me for the next video where we will be setting up virtualized networking